miles away from you. Yeah, but it's enough, isn't it? Because let me tell you, the difference between a good punch and a punch that misses is this, isn't it? The difference between me knocking you out and not eating you is tiny. So in a real situation, I'm going to get close. The thing is, I'm here, try and punch me now. It's a lot harder, isn't it? I've broken the punching range. And now what I'm going to do is right, take it to the ground now. And now because I'm big and heavy, now I've got you. And I say, right, you, should we go now? Do you want to get up? Do you want to behave? Yeah. You sure? Yeah, sure. Good. <laughs> you should have at least had a go. But anyway, you understand it's not worth it. But that's what I'm saying. You, and so as you develop your karate skills, you will develop sets of skills that suit your personal uh, remit. In other words, uh, I would have said that... Um, Ruby is an impactor because she hits hard, so she'll probably rely on that. Other people, not so, some people are very mobile, so you better at getting out of the way. Patrick spars with me, he, I can't get near him because he's too quick. But you would develop it yourself because what we're trying to do is that this is like a personal journey. You know, often Christ taught and everyone has to do the same thing, everyone lines up, and it's supposed to be like the robots. Out where anything works, does it? It's not anything like It's a martial art, and art means what? It's a self expression. So if you take a painter, you can't take Rubens and you can't take, I don't know, Sydney, uh, you can't take, say, um, Toulouse de Trek and say, oh, they paint different. Of course they paint different, because they're different people. Fighting's the same. You'll, you'll eventually develop your own fighting skills based on what works for you. And so groundwork and grappling is part of it. See, before they built any temples in, in, in China, because our, our history, our lineage always goes back to the Shaolin Temple in China. Before they did any of that, the Greeks had already documented three fundamental fighting systems. Okay, wrestling, which we still call wrestling, which was uh, grappling, only grappling. Then they had uh, pugilism, which has become modern boxing, which is impact only. And actually, real uh, Roman Greco uh, pugilism was, was more like kickboxing, but it was only impact. You could kick knee, elbow, head, but, but that was all it is. And then the final discipline was called pancreation. And pancreation means all strengths. The Brazilian Brazilians call it um, valetudo, meaning anything valid. In other words, in a fight, the rules are there are no rules. So you do whatever you have to do. And you have to try and develop that mindset. When I come in and I start throwing against walls and stuff, I'm trying to make you realise in a real situation, it's you or them. So don't, I, I hate it when I go, yeah, you know, if I'd have just gouged him in the eye when I had the chance, I could have just stamped on his foot or bitten him, I could have made, done something. I want you to always have that kind of mindset of, right, if it's kicking off now, I'm going to get nasty. Right, because there's too many people I know who've done crying. Oh, yeah, well, I got to fight in the pub, and then what happened was I fell for a punch why didn't to block it, and it's oh, shut up, you know. This, this stance is about building muscle and strength to make our kneeing techniques and our kicking techniques and our mobility quicker. It doesn't have any practical value. I'm not going to say to somebody, oh, so you want to fight me? <laughs> <laughs> no, what's that about? You know, in all the movies, the first thing you do in the movies is this, didn't they? Or that's not going to happen, is it? Yeah, because it's something you've done that, but the time you then figures are out, I'll be biting one of them. Oh. Okay? All right? It's the classic one, people stick their finger up. <laughs> Please do, because I tell you what, if you stick your finger up and I get that finger, you're in trouble now. Okay? I always say, you know, keep, keep, keep yourself close in. You know, don't let the arms drift out, because it's a handle. It's a handle. So everything we do is about that mindset of... of how do I respond? And the only difference between me and you is that I've got an experience that I'll, I can turn something very nasty very quickly, regardless of what you're doing. For you guys, it's that learning process of where you can do it just on autopilot. Where if this happens, that, that we'll, we, we'll respond this way. If that happens, we'll respond that way. Okay? I'm going to get you and Jen to work on that gex eye drill, because I've said I want to show you the classical gex eye drill, which is a karate person training with a karate person. Nothing wrong with that. But then we've got our version of it, which is about... When you try to defend something, you defend and counter, and then after that, you defend, counter, and then what's next? Contingency, because what happens if the thing you just try to do goes wrong? You've got to think about, well, what do I do next? Whereas the trouble is with a lot of Japanese martial arts is the idea is you, you block the person, punch, and it's all over. We, I criticised this the other day, when you take something to the ground, you've got to make sure they're very controlled, and then you move away from them, maintaining... Uh, 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 an awareness of them, that Zanchin thing I'm always telling you about. Zanchin, an awareness. Is, uh, is it ready? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, have I finished? Is this is person done. Remain ready, remain ready, that's what I meant. To say. Remain ready, that person can get up again. Because I'll tell you what happens is, and I had a habit of doing it myself, you do a technique, and you throw the person to the ground, that's great, you think, oh, no, we'll finish here yeah, because I've done the armor. Watch cage fighting. 
You see, them battered to pieces again, battered to pieces. And the next thing, they're up, they're up on their feet again, bashing the other guy up. Because we're much more resilient than we give ourselves credit for. Most times people get beaten up, they get caught with a lucky smack in the gob. You know? You get caught cold, and then most people then buckle. They think, oh God, I've been hit, because they're not used to getting hit. And then you buckle. So the idea is we do mat work and ground work because you've got to be familiar with the fact that if you're on the ground, you've still got better to do something. Okay? If, if I'm here, Charlie, you come at me, what I'm doing, and you, you, you come to kick, what I'm going to do is catch that kick and take it and get your leg and take it to the ground. Okay? So I'll take it down. And if, I, if I'm lucky, I'll keep this leg out and lock it up. Okay? Get this locked up, get, get, get something done from a ground level because you've got to be able to fight from every position. Okay? So if you're on the ground, you still got to be able to fight. You know? I always say what I'd like to do really is fill this room with phone boxes and get everyone with your partner in a phone box and fight there. Not that anyone ever knows what phone box is these days. The red things. Yeah, in red <laughs> We did the same for seven I did. I said, yeah, what I want you to try and do is fight in a fight like you're fighting in a phone box. This little girl's going, and at the end of the seminar she went over to her mum and said, huh, what's a phone box? Because she had no clue what I was talking about. But basically, the real fight, the real fighting goes on when you can't get away. Okay, the real fighting goes on when you can't get away. Imagine how different boxing would be if they made the ring six foot square instead of 20 foot square. Do you, know, do you want to see what I'm saying? No, boxers, boxers use the ring, don't they? They move, they move around a lot. But you're a, if you're in a, a ring that's the size of this box and you've got your martini yellow, your strategy's going to change a lot now because there's, escape, there's not so much escape room. You haven't got the distance to move around like you can in the ring and get on your toes and get ready to go. See? I'm not going to get that. Let me go. I'm pretty good through it. I'm pretty good through it. But, that's, but you stay mobile, because if you stay mobile, you're harder to hit. Because that's the skill of the fight, any good fight, is, is don't get hit. And it don't matter how hard you hit yourself, uh, they always said that um, Frank Bruno had one of the hardest punches in boxing, but he wasn't very good at not getting hit himself. And that's the real skill, is don't you get hit. It's become, I've become really fascinated with this element now, because that's the real skill, is like, don't get hurt. Don't matter about the other guy. Okay. okay, sometimes you have to hurt that person to stop them hurting you, but ideally, do whatever you can to just make sure you don't get hurt. All right? Okay, I've yacked enough, let's carry on and do something now.